the first video that used Animal Collective was, uh, or the one I know of, was the cliche video, or there was also a video, a digital video that used the, an intro song. Do you know about the digital video? The cliche is the first one that I can Yeah. And that was through French Fred. Yeah. I think I met Fred in France, just talking to him at a show or something. Yeah, it's very, very vague to me in my mind. <laughs> When that comes out, I mean, that's uh, cliche is a pretty prominent company. Did you see any uptick or change in skate fans per se, or kind of hard to say? Mm, I'm not. I, I I wouldn't say I saw like a big change. Yeah, not I mean, until, until like Minefield. There was a couple songs in that video. The Jake Johnson one. I'm not sure if that was Jake's idea or not. And then Jason has a in the flowers. What was the connection there? He was friendly with my sister, Abby, who does a lot of work and, and appreciated her art a lot. So they had sort of like a, you know, creative friendship. And so when he's the one who approached and wanted to use the music for the video, or was it Greg Hunt or someone else? I think it was him. You'd obviously heard of Jason Dill, but you probably at that time, most people hadn't necessarily heard of Jake Johnson. I think I'd read about him in Thrasher or something, but he was pretty new at that time. I feel like that was kind of like a first big part. I think that song too, the way it opens up, it's like such a good pairing. I think it's one of the top mixes for sure. It's a good one, yeah. yeah. This part is really, really awesome in that. Like yeah. That a lot. This song was like maybe the last thing we finished on the album. It was a demo that I made and brought it to Brian and Dave. And the song's about wanting to be uh, like a provider for a family. I just had a kid kind of right around that time. And I was just feeling like I really wanted to step my game up and not wanting to have hangups about the fact that I was really like aiming to provide for my wife at the time and, and my kid. When Pitchfork called My Girls the number one song of the year in 2009, is it hard to write after those type of accolades come out? And for me, I don't think. Um, I think in terms of a fan perspective, like, and in, in I think it might be hard to, it's hard to think of achieving that that kind of accolade again, but I don't think it's something we worry about, really. We just kind of... It's just not the target, I feel like. Yeah. I mean, it sounds corny, but the, I guess that's not how we, like, define the success of the song so much. It's more like if it feels exciting to us and we feel like we kind of pulled off what we were going for, I don't, I don't think we'd even know how to do that if we were trying to do it. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. It was like a, an accidental thing in a way. Uh, you know, I, I read in other reviews that you said, like, skating introduces a lot of things to people, obviously, um, because it was kind of like, especially in the 80s and 90s, leading a lot of like the cultural zeitgeist at the time among culture we care about. Do you think it still has that cachet now? I think so. I think uh, it's sort of like the epicenter of all these different sort of floating areas of culture. They all sort of meet in skateboarding to me, whether it's fashion, music, uh, athletics, it kind of feels like. Another thing that's really sick about skateboarding to me is that it's survived these sort of like cycles where it's sort of like not a, a mainstream kind of surface thing. And then the mainstream surface stuff kind of latches onto it and it gets this kind of mega exposure and then gets kind of corny. And every time that's happened, skateboarding finds like a new way to kind of come back and, and like keep it real in a way. And I think that's really cool. How closely do you follow stuff now? Just a well, YouTube video here and there? Yeah, or... me personally, like just peripherally. Really, really. I did more just because of once I got more and more to touring, I, I got a little more scared of skateboarding actually and breaking a bone or something like that and not being able to uh, use my arm or hand to play guitar, that kind of thing. I, sometimes I'll put on a video, like a YouTube or something, just to, uh, as I'm kind of getting my day started or something, it always feels like a nice sort of like ramp to make stuff. Who are some skaters in the last five, 10 years that were titles or videos that stood out to you? I like uh, Max Palmer. Nick Stain and Fancy Lad stuff. 
is there any brand or skater you would not let use your music? I don't think so. I mean, yeah, that would be personal. I'm pretty, uh, pretty cavalier when it comes to people using stuff in movies or TV shows. The advertisements were way more picky about. But... Yeah. A lot of the skate videos uh, from our generation and even for moving forward it were shot with the VX1000. That's the, you know, the classic. What's an audio equivalent of gear? Mini disc. I can't, yeah. I don't even know enough if it's a joke or not. Is, is that true? We used oh, to use them a lot. And yeah. uh, there was one summer really early on for us where we were recording with this uh, Sony mic. It was a, like a stereo mic. It had a really wide kind of um, image to it. And we would just set it up, connect it to the mini disc player. And you could record like 70 or 80 minutes on those things. So we would just let it let it rip and improvise songs and come in and out of stuff and sounded really cool, really unique, and I'd say it's really easy, small. We used them a lot. What's the secret to having a long career as you guys have? I wish had. we knew. <laughs> yeah. I don't know other than to say just like keep keep going without uh, being distracted. Just keep moving forward. It's uh, the best I got. You know, change is a healthy part of your life. And I feel like inevitably changes will happen. So I think it's just better to accept a lot of the changes. And I think that's kind of what we do. A model for that is Animal Collective. I think we've always kind of embraced the change. Because it can be tempting if something does good to just be like, well, let's run that back, you know? And I think that's, to me, that's a recipe for uh, uh, whatever the opposite of longevity is. It's the end of the- Thank you.